Hello and welcome to Avoiding Big Brother. In today's video we will be discussing proxies and the tool proxy chains that can be used to hide your IP address. Now if you're part of a hacker community or you've spoken to hackers, they will swear that proxy chains are the go-to method for anonymity whilst carrying out hacking related activities. In this video I'll go through the options for proxy chains. I'll include some clips from a demonstration by Network Chuck where he uses proxy chains in Kali Linux. I will finish the video discussing the security and vulnerabilities of using proxy chains and how it compares to a VPN, a virtual private network. So the purpose of this video is for people who are looking for security and anonymity. This is not about hacking or committing crimes. We don't want anyone doing that. It's simply looking at a technique that many hackers would use for anonymity that anybody could incorporate as part of their security controls. I won't go into too much detail about what proxies are. You can watch my video on proxies that is part of my free course on digital privacy and security. A link will be included in the description below. A proxy is a server that sits in between a user's client and the destination. For example, a destination would be the server of the website that web requests or DNS requests are sent to. It can disguise an IP address, but does not provide encryption between the user's client and the proxy server. A proxy does not require software and can be used and configured within an application that provides the options to do so. There are different protocols that can be used for a proxy such as HTTP, HTTPS and SOX version 4 or version 5. SOX version 5 is the best option generally and more flexible than the other proxy options. The Tor network itself is a SOX proxy. As a proxy as a server, you can obtain IP addresses for proxies by simply doing a quick search on Google. There are hundreds of websites with lists of free to use proxy servers that include the information you need to configure it with an application, such as the IP address and the port number. All you need to do is enter a search query such as free proxy list and you'll get loads of results in the search engine. And you'll find a list like this one. However, I would not recommend using one of these lists for finding proxies, and I will discuss this later on in this video. So now let's move on to proxy chains. What is proxy chains? Proxy chains is a tool that enables a chain of proxies, multiple servers, to run a TCP connection through. It makes it harder for forensics to find where a DNS or web request is being made from. It is not impossible, but it is extremely hard to sift through all of the multiple servers and the logs within them to locate your true IP address. The TCP connection is forced through proxy protocols, and this could be secure protocols like SOX version 5 or HTTPS, or less secure proxies like HTTP. The TCP connection could even be forced through the Tor network, which as mentioned earlier, is a SOX proxy as well. If the servers are located in different countries, and this makes it even harder for investigation. This is why hackers use proxy chains to avoid getting into trouble and prevent an organization being able to identify them. And it is not just the bad guys using it. Ethical hackers need to protect themselves as well. Most organizations are going to have a hard time identifying someone who is using proxy chains, but it is not completely secure. A nation state sponsored adversary would most likely be able to identify a hacker but it would take time, resources and technology to do so. As proxy chains is used by a lot of hackers, it is no surprise that the tool comes pre-packaged with the penetration testing Linux distribution, Kali Linux. There are three different options to configure proxy chains and how you're going to chain the servers and I'll go through them. The configuration can be accessed, edited and changed within a file, which will be demonstrated in the network chuck clips in a moment. These options will affect the behavior of the chain. So the first option, which is not the best, is strict chain, where the list of servers will be chained in order. The second option is dynamic chain, which is the same as strict chain, but any dead servers are excluded. The final option is random chain, where a combo of proxies can be selected from the list randomly to form the chain and the user can specify how many proxies will be used. I'm now going to talk through some clips taken from Network Chuck's video on proxy chains. I will include a link to the full video in the description below. I could not demonstrate this myself as I do not have any reliable proxies to use with proxy chains. I do not use proxy chains, I am not a hacker and prefer to use a VPN either on its own or as an extra security layer with Tor if I need it. So here is Network Chuck demonstrating proxy chains in Kali Linux. He's locating the file for proxy chains 
and he's looking for the .conf file and this is the file that can be edited and changed. He goes into the editor and changes this file from strict chain to dynamic chain. So he does this by putting a hashtag before strict chain and removing the hashtag before dynamic chain. And he will scroll down and he reveals that the proxy also sends DNS requests through it. And at the bottom, he then enters the uh, proxy servers. He then runs proxy chains. And he runs this with Firefox. You could do this with Tor if it is enabled on your operating system. And then he's visiting google.com as an example. He then goes back into command line checks that the DNS requests are going through the proxy server and he also checks that the IP address belongs to the proxy server as well that he's selected and it locates him in Thailand. To finish off this presentation I'll go through the vulnerabilities of proxy chains and compare it with a VPN. As I mentioned earlier you do not want to use proxies that are offered as part of free lists that you find through a simple Google search. The problem with many proxies is that you cannot rely on them. They may be out of commission and a dead server. Or worse yet, the server is controlled by a hacker who is waiting to entrap someone. So you could select a proxy for security purposes but end up becoming a victim of a cyber attack. The proxy could also be controlled by law enforcement or a nation state sponsored agency. I do not recommend any free proxy lists. You'll need to do a bit of research and scouting around for a reputable provider of proxy servers that you can use for proxy chains and you'll have to pay for them. There is no doubt that proxy chains is a great tool for hackers if they can find reliable servers, but proxy chains is not as good for general anonymity as a VPN would be, let's say for surfing the web or internet communications. Proxies do not provide encryption between the user's client and the proxy server, that is why there is always a chance that an adversary with the necessary resources can identify you. VPNs provide encryption for all traffic between the user's client and the VPN server, although no encryption between the VPN server and the destination. But this can be solved with another encryption protocol such as HTTPS and SSH tunnels. A VPN is not a complete security solution. You cannot always rely on a VPN provider. But there may be a solution to this. You create your own VPN server using OpenVPN. Hence, for general internet anonymity, a VPN would always get my vote ahead of proxy chains. It could get quite costly, but setting up your own VPN server would be a close to perfect security solution alongside using Tor and other encryption protocols for internet communications. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you for watching.